why you think there are some stories that get special attention or special investigative reporting on One America News that, that might not on other networks. And, and I think specifically about the Ukraine hoax. You know, we've had so many scandals in the Biden administration. We forget what Adam Schiff tried to do to the presidency in the Ukraine hoax. And it, it, the depth of the investigative reporting uh, on One America News was far and beyond the best that we saw in the country. What is it about the philosophy there that might highlight a, a different lens for the information? I think that um, when, our, when our producers and the news director and the H's um, are looking at stories that we want to put, say, Pearson Sharp on to do more investigating it more in depth on, we're looking at those ones specifically, too, that the mainstream either ignore or have skewed the narrative so far, the opposite side of the spectrum, that the story is so convoluted you can't make sense of it, or they literally change the narrative. So if we're showing you facts and something is white, they're telling you it's black. And that's what the Ukraine. I mean, look, you, Matt, you've heard in the last few weeks, of course, everybody's saying away oh, and misinformation, disinformation, right? Russian propaganda. Trump owns us, tells us what to say. That's all a bunch of bullshit, number one. Number two, to your question about the stories, if you have all of the networks for the past five years saying that Donald J. Trump colluded with Russia when the facts are been proven, the dossier was fake, he didn't collude, then yeah, we're gonna hit it even harder to try and offset because we're only one network and you've got half a dozen every day that are telling you the opposite and lying. So I'd say that's kind of how we pick and make sure that some of those stories that are just being blatantly lied about in the mainstream media have more attention so people get the facts. We don't know what hour they're watching, what show they're watching, so sometimes you've got to just keep repeating it so they see it, especially, again, when CNN, MSNBC, I've got them in my office, I'm watching their lies right now. Uh, you know, we've got Navarro, Navarro getting subpoenaed, uh, Peter Navarro that worked for the president, of course, MSNBC with the plot on January 6th. We got Giuliani and prosecutors uh, going after Giuliani in New York on CNN. Um, and then Russia's doing well, let's talk. Let's talk about the DOJ for a moment. The oh, Department of Justice concerned a lot of parents when they used the domestic terrorism label uh, to try to have a basis to do what they wouldn't otherwise be able to do, and that's categorize people by their politics, to hunt them, to do everything they can to ruin their lives. Uh, there has been a recent Justice Department pronouncement that people who spread disinformation or misinformation may be labeled as domestic extremists and domestic terrorists. Senator Hawley unleashed his wrath at Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco after her boss, Attorney General Merrick Garland, issued this unprecedented memorandum. It directs, quote, the Federal Bureau of Investigation to facilitate the discussion of strategies for addressing threats against school administrators, board members, teachers, and staff, and will open dedicated lines of communication for threat reporting, assessment, and response. Parents waiting sometimes for hours to speak at a local school board meeting to express concerns about critical race theory or the masking of their students, particularly young children, is that in and of itself, is, is that harassment and intimidation? Is waiting to express one's view at a school board meeting harassment and intimidation? As the Attorney General's memorandum made quite clear, spirited debate is welcome, is a hallmark of this country. Um, it's something we all should engage in. And no, I don't think so, Ms. Monica. With all due respect, it didn't make it quite clear. It doesn't define those terms. Now, since One America News has falsely uh, had to endure the smears of these labels. Do you worry that you and your colleagues at One America News may be labeled domestic terrorists by the Department of Justice? I'll wear it as a badge of honor. I couldn't give two shits less, Matt. Uh, you've probably seen the videos. I've gone to my child's school board meetings multiple times. I've taken a cameraman with me. You may not think that keeping these face muzzles on our kids, maybe you're thinking you're keeping them safe. You're not. So my question is, why are you doing this? Well, it's probably because you're either misinformed, blinded by fear, uneducated on the matter, or you simply lack the backbone to stand up to these tyrannical mandates. Note I said mandates, not laws, because they are not laws. A select few in power in this state and in the federal government lack the intestinal fortitude to stand up to these mandates. I've exposed and helped parents there um, get the recall going for the board members, and I would like to say that those brave parents that have been speaking out for the last year over the mask and vaccine mandates, the CRT, the oversexual books that are on the shelves in K through eight, because parents have taken action with that just in the school district my kid goes to, uh, I'm proud to announce that the chairman uh, just resigned. 
Now, he took another government job, but at least he's off the school board. So if they're going to call me a domestic terrorist because I went to my 14-year-old daughter's school board meeting and said, uh, my daughter feels faint when she has these damn masks on. She tells me, you can't see people's expressions. She tells me the most damaging thing when I hear her go, it's okay, dad, I don't mind. I don't mind wearing it. Ugh, that drives me nuts. So if parents have to go, speak up to get these mandates pulled, to get the CRT out of the schools, and you get labeled as a domestic terrorist, so be it, parents. Because soon enough, there'll be a reckoning. And Matt, let's hope by the grace of God, Republicans take back control this November. And come next year, the DOJ is going to have a lot of answering to do. And I have a feeling we probably won't see the current AG in his role once Republicans fully take everything back. I hope not. So I don't care. They can label me whatever they want. They'll be tapping my phones and watching what you and I are doing right now. I don't care. <laughs> probably. We, we, we welcome all in the federal government to watch Firebrand and to watch Real America <laughs> with Dan Ball. Uh, Dan, while the Department of Justice is not doing or while they are doing these very strange things to target Americans, there's important work that the Department of Justice is not doing, particularly in the area of antitrust. I'm very concerned that large technology companies uh, and other large businesses in America have gained so much power that they've limited uh, novel and unique voices, novel and unique experiences in the marketplace. Uh, we've seen that with Google, Facebook, where the, the DOJ does kind of just enough, but they don't really use antitrust powers. Uh, now we see a tremendous amount amount of power being concentrated in the hands of those who distribute television content, whether that's through satellite, whether that is through coaxial cable. 